We just celebrated the, the Lord's Supper and read and heard of His death on the cross in our place for our sins. That would be Good Friday, which again is hard to call it Good Friday when our Lord and Savior is killed, but it's Good Friday because of Sunday. On Friday it says that when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph, or Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud, and laid him in the tomb that had been cut out of rock. And he rolled the stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the, Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw that where he was laid. So he was there on Saturday. And then we pick up in Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, if you have a Bible with you, turn to Luke 24. If you do not have a Bible with you today, there should be some few Bibles in front of you. You can go to page 884 to Luke chapter 24. Dr. Luke writes for us about the resurrection. Luke chapter 24, beginning in verse 1. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found a stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Verse 6, He is not here, but He has risen. Remember how He told you while He was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified on and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But... Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. The first day of the week for them, of course, is going to be Sunday. Saturday was the Sabbath. That's why they couldn't go then. And the, the time of day when he was taken was the day of preparation on Friday. And the time of day, they weren't able to really prepare the body with the spices as they wanted to do. So that's why on Sunday, the first day of the week, why we worship on Sunday is the Lord's resurrection. But they go and they have the spices with them, verse 1 tells us, and they're going to anoint the Lord's body. When they get there, that stone that was put there is now rolled away. And they went in and they couldn't find the Lord's body. And in fact, instead, they got a bit of a surprise. They were perplexed about this, and two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. The angels who are there. And as they were frightened, notice how they're frightened when they see the angels. They're not something that are like little, we talked about this before, not little babies that are cute. When we see angels, people are frightened. So they're frightened and they bow down, it says. And they say to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Yeah. Notice what they say. Remember how he told you while he was still in God. It's interesting that from here they say in verse 7 that the Son of Man must be delivered. The Son of Man, they use that phrasing because Jesus used that phrasing about himself. It's not by accident that he's using that. And for those of you who are familiar with the book of Daniel, you would know all the way back in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 7, that phrasing is used, Son of Man. And it's talking about this glorious one who would go to the Father. Let me share it with you. 
Listen to what Daniel saw hundreds of years before in the vision. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him he was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples and nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom is one that shall not be destroyed like we saw the promises to David. There will be a king who sits on the throne. It's this very one. And I would submit to you that this was after Jesus' death and his ascension. After he rises and he goes, and he goes to the ancients of days, and he goes to the Father, and he's given all dominion and power and authority. So when Jesus was teaching them and calling himself the Son of Man over and over and over again, he was telling them, that guy in Daniel 7, that's me. And so here in the text, as the angels are talking, they said, remember... Don't you remember? He said it. He said it over and over and over again, but they couldn't see it yet. Friends, sometimes we're not ready to see things, are we? Things have to work in a certain way for us to be ready. They weren't ready at that point. So verse 7 says that the Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise. All that comes out of the Old Testament. Multiple places where it talks about Jesus' death, His suffering, and the resurrection. And look what they did then. And they remembered his words. And then you go and they go and they tell everybody. They go and tell the apostles. They're telling everybody that they can. But what's interesting in verse 11, you see that the apostles, those there, they don't believe them. He told them over and over and over again this is going to happen. And they don't believe the women. And Peter's kind of like, hey, that's hope. So Peter runs. We know that John actually goes as well. But Peter runs and he looks in. And he doesn't see him either. And then it said there in verse 12 that he went home marveling. That, that can be a good marveling or that can be a bad marveling, a doubting marveling. And in this passage, I just, have, I just have four things I want to share with you before we end today. Just four things. The first thing is, you, saw, you notice the apostles, they don't believe. So the first thing I have for you is believe. Believe in the resurrection. Believe that our Lord died. Believe that He rose for us. Believe that that was the plan before the foundation of the earth to redeem a people, a multitude of every tribe, tongue, and nation. That King, it's all part of the plan. So believe it. And guess what? Keep believing it. Keep believing it. Keep believing it. Every day, all day. As you believe this thing, my second thing is remember. Just like the, the, the women were encouraged to do, remember. Because guess what? Some of y'all are really forgetful. I can say that because my wife just snuck out. If she were here, she would say, oh, really? We are forgetful people. That's not unique to just us, the nation of Israel. Always they were forgetting what the Lord had done. That's why the Lord would constantly remind them who he was. And he was the God that delivered them out of Egypt. He saved them. We have to be reminded over and over again because we are a forgetful people. We need to help each other remember as well. So the first thing I have for you again is believe. The second thing is remember. Remember. The third thing is comes out of what Peter did, although I'm not sure if he was doing it in a positive way or a negative way, but I would encourage you to marvel. Believe, remember, and marvel at the glorious idea that God would send His Son to die for you and that death couldn't hold Him. Marvel over the fact that sin, Satan, and death are defeated by Jesus. Don't take that lightly. Don't take that lightly. He's the only answer to the, the sickness, the death that we all face ever since the garden. He's the only answer. So let me encourage you to marvel at His goodness. Marvel at the greatness of God's plan. And the last thing in the passage that we saw is in two places it says that the women went and they told. Friends, believe in the Gospel. Believe in Jesus' death. Believe in the resurrection. Remember it. Remind one another of it. Marvel at it. And go and tell everybody you can. Some aren't going to believe. They're just not going to believe. But you know what? Some will.
And we know in heaven there will be this multitude of every tribe, tongue, and nation. So as you're going, tell your neighbors, tell your family members, tell the nations. Be a part of telling the greatest story that has ever existed about Jesus our Lord in that empty tomb. I'll end with this. Have you ever wondered why the resurrection is important? We talk a lot about the cross. We talk about Jesus dying on the cross. We talk about His blood being shed for us. His body being broken for us as a sacrifice. And on the cross, He takes the wrath of God. The wrath of God over our sin, He takes that upon Himself. The very One who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. But why is the resurrection important? In Romans chapter 4, the Apostle Paul is writing and he's speaking at this point about faith. He's talking about righteousness. Now he's talking about how Abraham's righteousness came because he believed God. He believed that God would send one from his own line that would save all the peoples of the world. All who would believe in Him. And in that passage, let me read a few verses here. Talking of Abraham, that is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in Him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses, now watch this, and raised for our justification. The importance of the resurrection is it's tied to your justification. It's a big word, $2 word there. But as some have reminded me here, a way to remember what it means is just as if I've never sinned. To be justified is to be made right with God. And not only, which is remarkable, but not only being forgiven for your sins, but as if you never sinned at all. The resurrection shows that Jesus' sacrifice, His obedience to the cross, His death, that sacrifice is the perfect human, born of a virgin, for you and for me. That resurrection shows that God said, I will accept it. I will accept it on behalf of everyone who would believe. Friends, He died so you could be made right with God. And He rose so you would be justified. And heaven itself on that day when Jesus rises, oh, I believe there's a celebration there that was. And that's why every time one sinner repents, what happens in heaven? There's a party. Friends, if you're here and you don't know Him, I pray that today you would trust in Him. That we would see celebrations today in heaven because of your faith in Christ. And Christian, again, if you're here, let me encourage you, don't make light of the resurrection. Marvel at it. Believe it. Remember it. And let's go tell a lost and dying world the good news. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together and then we're going to have one last song. Father, we do thank You for Your grace and Your love and Your mercy. We're thankful for Your Word and we're thankful for all that You've done for us in Christ. We're thankful that we can, we can celebrate the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus. Lord, we're, we're thankful for the fact that he, He's gone to You and He's interceding for us and for the for the fact that one day He's coming back for us. So the story's not done. But until He comes back, Lord, we know that we have work to do for Your glory. We need to love You with all that we have. Love one another. And tell the good news to our neighbors and the nations. And marvel at who You are and what You've done. Lord, may our singing now be pleasing to You. In Jesus' name.